Astronomers just discovered a planet out there that is so massive and so close to its star that it defies the current theories of how planets and stars form and evolve. This planet, named LHS 3154b, is more than 13 times as massive as Earth and orbits an ultra-cool dwarf star that is nine times less massive than the Sun. The mass ratio of the planet and the star is more than 100 times higher than that of Earth and the Sun. This is one of the most extreme and intriguing cases of planet-star mass ratio ever observed, and it challenges our understanding of the cosmos. In this video, we will explore this amazing discovery and how it could change our view of the universe. We will also learn about the instrument that detected this planet, the Habitable Zone Planet Finder, and how it works. So, stay tuned and get ready to be amazed by this new challenge for astronomy. The first thing that we need to understand is why this discovery is so surprising and challenging for the current theories of planet formation and evolution. To do that, we need to compare the planet and the star with our own Earth and Sun. The newly discovered planet is more than 13 times as massive as Earth, and it orbits an ultra-cool dwarf star that is nine times less massive than the Sun. The mass ratio of the planet and the star is more than 100 times higher than that of Earth and the Sun. This means that the planet is much more massive than we would expect for a star of that size. In fact, according to the paper published by the researchers, this is the highest planet-star mass ratio ever measured for a star, with a mass below 0.2 solar masses. To put this in perspective, imagine if Earth was as massive as Jupiter, and the Sun was as small as a red dwarf. That would be a similar situation to the newly discovered planet and its star. But that's not all. The planet is also much closer to its star than Earth is to the Sun. It orbits its star in only 3.4 days, at a distance of about 0.02 astronomical units, which is the average distance between Earth and the Sun. For comparison, Earth orbits the Sun in 365 days, at a distance of one astronomical unit. This means that the planet receives more than 400 times more radiation from its star than Earth does from the Sun. This makes the planet very hot, with an estimated surface temperature of about 500 degrees Celsius, or 932 degrees Fahrenheit. To illustrate this point, let's look at this diagram. As you can see, the planet is much closer to its star than even Mercury, the closest planet to the Sun in our solar system. So, where is the issue here? Or, in other words, what does this mean for the current theories of planet formation and evolution? Well, it means that they have a hard time explaining how such a planet could exist around such a star. According to the most widely accepted theory, planets form from a disk of gas and dust that surrounds a young star. The gas and dust clump together to form larger and larger bodies until they become planets. The mass of the planets depends on the mass and composition of the disk and the distance from the star. Generally, the more massive the disk, the more massive the planets. And the farther away from the star, the more likely the planets are to be gas giants, like Jupiter and Saturn, rather than rocky planets, like Earth and Mars. This is because the gas and dust are cooler and more abundant at larger distances, allowing them to form larger and thicker atmospheres around the planets. But this theory does not seem to work for the newly discovered planet and its star. The star is very low mass, which means that it had a very low mass disk, which means that it should not have been able to form such a massive planet, and the planet is very close to the star, which means that it should have been too hot and too exposed to the star's radiation to retain a thick atmosphere. So, how did this planet form and migrate to its current orbit? This is the question that the researchers and other astronomers are trying to answer, and we will look at some of the possible scenarios in the next section. The researchers who published the paper proposed four hypotheses based on different mechanisms of planet formation and evolution. These are gravitational instability, disk migration, planet-planet scattering, and stellar flyby. Let's see what each of these hypotheses means and what their pros and cons are. Let's start with gravitational instability. 
This is a mechanism that occurs when a disk of gas and dust around a young star becomes unstable due to its own gravity and fragments into clumps that can form planets. This mechanism can produce very massive planets, even around low mass stars. And it can also explain why the planet is so close to the star, because the disk itself is very compact. However, this mechanism has some drawbacks. First, it requires a very massive and cold disk, which is unlikely for such a low mass star. Second, it predicts that the planet should have a very eccentric orbit, which is not observed. And finally, it does not explain why there are no other planets in the system, as the disk should have formed multiple clumps. The second hypothesis is disk migration. This is a mechanism that occurs when a planet that forms in the disk interacts with the disk's gas and dust and changes its orbit over time. This mechanism can explain why the planet is so close to the star, because the disk's gas and dust can drag the planet inward. However, this mechanism also has some drawbacks. First, it requires a very massive and long-lived disk, which is unlikely for such a low-mass star. Second, it predicts that the planet should have a very circular orbit, which is not observed. And third, it does not explain why the planet is so massive, as the disk should have limited the planet's growth. The third hypothesis is planet-planet scattering. This is a mechanism that occurs when multiple planets that form in the disk interact with each other gravitationally and change their orbits chaotically. This mechanism can explain why the planet is so massive because it could have accreted more gas and dust from the disk after scattering another planet. It can also explain why the planet is so close to the star because it could have been scattered inward by another planet. And it can explain why the planet has a slightly eccentric orbit because it could have been perturbed by another planet. However, this mechanism also has some drawbacks. First, it requires the presence of other planets in the system that are not detected. Second, it requires a very specific configuration and timing of the planetary interactions, which is unlikely. And third, it does not explain why the star is so low mass, as it should have had a more massive disk to form multiple planets. The fourth hypothesis is stellar flyby. This is a mechanism that occurs when a star passes close to another star and its planetary system and affects their orbits due to gravity. This mechanism can explain why the planet is so massive because it could have formed farther away from the star where the disk was more massive and cooler. It can also explain why the planet is so close to the star because it could have been pulled inward by the passing star and it can explain why the planet has a slightly eccentric orbit, because it could have been disturbed by the passing star. However, this mechanism also has some drawbacks. First, it requires the very rare and coincidental event of a close stellar encounter, which is unlikely. Second, it requires a very specific geometry and velocity of the encounter, which is unlikely. And third, it does not explain why there are no other planets in the system as the passing star should have affected them as well. As you can see, none of these hypotheses can fully explain the origin and evolution of the newly discovered planet and its star. They all have some advantages and disadvantages, and they all need more observational and theoretical evidence to support or reject them. This is why this discovery is so challenging and exciting for astronomy, because it opens up new possibilities and questions that need to be investigated in the future. One of the implications of this discovery is that it shows that there is a great diversity and complexity of planetary systems in the universe, and that we need to expand our search and understanding of them. The newly discovered planet and its star are part of a population of ultra-cool dwarf stars and their planets, which are very common in the galaxy, but very difficult to observe. These stars are very faint and red, and their planets are very small and dim, making them hard to detect. However, the researchers estimated that there could be about 100 million planets like this one in the galaxy, and that some of them could be even more massive and closer to their stars. They also suggested that there could be other types of planets around these stars, such as rocky planets, water worlds, or even habitable planets. These are some of the topics that the researchers and other astronomers will try to investigate in the future using more observations and simulations. Of course, these are just speculations, 
and we do not have any evidence or proof of life on such planets, but we do have a lot of curiosity and imagination, and we can use them to explore the possibilities and wonders of the universe. That is why this discovery is so exciting and inspiring for astronomy and astrobiology, because it shows us that there is so much more to learn and discover, and that we are not limited by our own experience and perspective. We hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new and interesting. If you did, please give us a like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and we will try to answer them. Thank you for watching and see you next time.